Well, Alabama Republicans have recovered from their brief attempt to sound reasonable to show how hateful they are after all, in case you didn't already know this. Because the Alabama governor signed a ban on DEI funds that restricts divisive concepts in schools. Just think about it. Think about it. Your very existence, because you're not white, cis, or straight, is considered divisive. I mean, how can you say this any other way but to say people who say this are hateful? I mean, I just don't know what else, what other word you can use for it. So, to the article. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey signed a bill Wednesday that bans state funding of diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in schools, public colleges, and state agencies, joining a wave of Republican-led efforts to quash DEI initiatives. The new law will impose restrictions around what it calls eight divisive concepts, dealing with race and personal identity. It also requires public colleges to designate bathrooms for use by individuals based on their biological sex. Now, I've seen plenty of trans men, and I can guarantee you if any of these people saw them walking into a woman's bathroom, they would lose their shit because a man is using the bathroom. Can, and they would be completely in the right to say that. The problem is, they're the ones who are causing it. I mean, it's like they don't, they think trans people are just so obviously not the gender they claim to be that they can pick them out easily, I honestly have no idea what they think they're accomplishing. There are plenty of trans men who you wouldn't want in a woman's bathroom because they look like men. I mean, I just don't understand where, where they're getting this from. And same thing with trans women. There are plenty of trans women who pass. So, how do you think you're going to, to even, um, what's the word? How are you even going to, um, enforce this rule? The only way I can think of to enforce it is to look at other people's bodies. So, if that's the only way, then who becomes the creeper then? It's certainly not trans people. My God! Ivy signed the bill one day after the state House and Senate gave final approval to the measure, SB 129. It will take effect on October 1st. Well, at least we have time. College students who oppose the bill have organized protests against it, including a large rally at the State House earlier this month, member station WBHM reports. For um, clarity, I'm, I'm getting this from NPR. The purpose of this bill is to prevent compelled speech and indoctrination, Republican Senator Will Barfoot said when he introduced the legislation, according to WBHM. Compelled speech and indoctrination? How is forcing people to not talk about things not compelled speech and indoctrination? I would think being allowed to, oh, I don't know, talk about what you feel is comfortable would you know, not be compelled speech. All I can think of is these people are screaming, wah, wah, I can't, I can't be bigoted towards people anymore. 
And so you're compelling me to be nice. That is all I get from that. And that is not the look I'm sure that this douchebag thinks he wants. Because whenever I use the terms bigot, transphobe, racist, sexist, whatever, people get upset. So they instinctively know those are bad words. Yet they are perfectly comfortable with encapsulating those words but somehow if you don't use those words to describe them, it's okay. Ah! Bigotry is so weird. It's certainly not logical. Since 2023, 80 anti-DEI bills have been introduced in 28 states and Congress, according to the Chronicle of Higher Education. Measures have been signed into law in eight states. Critics of such bills say they're motivated more by politics than by educational aspirations. You don't say. They, are all, they also say efforts to ban DEI are more likely to undermine rather than protect free speech protections. You don't say. You know, I understand. People want to be able to be bigoted and say and use the N word or the F word or whatever, the C word, whatever, against people they don't like. That is not what DEI does. You can be as bigoted as your little heart, little, um, little, um, shriveled heart desires. However, that does not mean that the people around you are going to just sit back and nod and smile and ignore and just act like they agree with you. No, they have as much the right to say you suck as you have the right to be a, be a bigot. So, no, this is not helping free speech because the government is... The government is the only one free speech protections protect from. The government cannot compel you to say certain things. So by this very bill, it is a violation of free speech because the government is telling you what you can and cannot say. And I don't see how people are not understanding this. I mean, I just, I get that you're that you're whiny, that you're not able to get away with being a horrible person, but at least understand that much. It's not a free speech issue that's preventing you from saying it. It's a societal issue that's telling you that how terrible of a person you are if you say those things. I mean, I just don't understand why this is so hard. All right, let's get to the specifics. Under the bill, anyone who knowingly violates its restrictions can be disciplined or fired. Well, that's nice. The nine-page bill lists eight main prohibitions aimed at public colleges, local boards of education, and state agencies. It says they cannot sponsor or maintain a DEI program or office, Direct or compel a student, employee, or contractor to personally affirm, adopt, or adhere to a divisive concept. So basically, nobody, say, with trans people, there are so many people who have this thing against pronouns when it comes to trans people. Um, so nobody could force a person to not misgender someone. You know, do I think that they should be forced to mis to not misgender someone? No. Do I think that they should be called out and shamed for not not being a decent human being? I see no problem with that. Fine if you don't if you don't like trans people or black people or gay people or whatever it is. I don't care. You do not get you do not, if you have an opinion, that's fine. But you don't get to shut down other people's. 
people have the right to tell you to take a long walk off a short beer. Require, require people to attend or participate in any diversity, equity, and inclusion program or any training, orientation, or coursework that advocates for or requires assent to a divisive concept. Okay, um, again, I question diversity training. I really do. People who say bigoted things then have to undergo sensitivity training. And people who are only like that because it's what they've heard as opposed to a sincerely held belief, those people might benefit. But those people who are rotten to the core, this isn't going to do them a damn bit of good. So, but at the same time, if you're in a position of power, you should not probably be telling your students that they suck. I mean, yeah, if you're in a position of power and working especially in, I mean, even in college, people are still um, sensitive. So maybe, yeah, maybe if you want to work in a school where you don't have to be confronted with diversity, uh, maybe go to, I don't know, like Liberty U, where the only diverse student body you'll see are the basketball players. Possibly football. I don't know if they have football. Make anyone share his or her personal point of view on any divisive concept outside of an academic setting. Okay, that makes perfect sense. No one should be forced to be outed for being bigots. That's perfectly fine. I wonder how many of these things are actually happening. And how many of it is is people butthurt so, so afraid of being outed as a bigot that they're coming up with this list? Because most of these things sound fairly reasonable under certain circumstances. Require students, workers, or contractors to take part in any activity that involves lobbying at the state or local level for legislation related to a divisive concept. Again, is this actually happening? I don't think any of this is happening. I think this is a bunch of bigots who just cannot handle that they might get outed as being bigots, so they come up with all this stupid, stupid requirements. It's like, oh my God. Penalize or discriminate against a student, employee, or contractor because they refuse to endorse, confess, or otherwise assent to a divisive concept or diversity statement. Okay. Oh, the irony here. We have discrimination laws against protected classes, but apparently now it's discriminatory to actually enforce that. Because apparently you're discriminating against the majority. No. We have discrimination laws. We have them for a reason. If you are that butthurt, find a white enclave or a cis enclave or something. And leave those of us who are normal alone. Use race or color as a sole condition for enrolling in a class, training, or orientation. And this is where they give up the ghost. They do not think that if you are a racial minority, that you could possibly be of anything. Obviously, you must have gotten there because just because of the color of your skin. That is literally not how this works. I mean, okay, you're anti-affirmative action, fine. Even affirmative action does not just look at race. It looks at the whole body plus race because, because racial minorities are minorities for a reason. It's not just because they're, they're not as many 
many of them in this country. It's because they've been treated like crap for time for the beginning of the U.S. So if you're black, if you're Native American, yeah, you might get in over a white person because of your race, but that's in addition to all your other qualifications, not just because you are black or you're Native American. That is literally not how it works. Ugh. Spend their own funds or apply for or accept a grant, federal funding, or private funding for the purpose of compelling assent to a divisive concept or any other purpose prohibited in this act provided that such funding may be provided to student, faculty, or staff organizations or associations. Ugh, Jesus Christ. They are so scared that people will discover that racism exists, that they're actively trying to prevent people from learning about racism, or sexism, or any ism for that matter. It is so mind-boggling how dumb this is okay what are the divisive concepts because that's the other thing it literally anything can be a divisive concept learning about white nationalism could be a divisive concept learning about religion could be a divisive concept but somehow I don't think especially if it's Christianity somehow I don't think that's what they mean The legislation does not specifically mention the troubling record of Alabama and the U.S. on race, such as the dehumanizing enslavement of black people and the long-standing attempts to disenfranchise black voters. Huh. Never would have figured that. The way schools teach students about these topics has been a political lightning rod in recent years as opponents took aim at critical race theory, which again, not something that's taught in, in um, anything but a Harvard Law class. So, yeah. The new Alabama legislation lists eight divisive concepts that range from the idea that any race, color, religion, sex, ethnicity, or national origin is inherently superior or inferior. Okay, to the notion that any individual should accept, acknowledge, affirm, or assent to a sense of guilt, complicity, or a need to apologize on the basis of his or her race, color, religion, sex, ethnicity, or national origin. My God, this is like, I'm, I feel like I'm in an alternate reality. None of this is happening. Just because you're a bigot or you feel guilty that bigotry is, exists does not mean that was the goal. Nobody is trying to make a white person feel guilty about being white. If you feel guilty for being white, that's on you. That's a you problem. This is just to let you know that this shit happens and there are ways to mitigate racism, the systemic racism. That does not mean that every white person is guilty. That just means that this this happened in the past, it's still happening. If you feel guilty because of your race, that that's something you have to deal with. Nobody is telling you to feel guilty. But because they probably, or they would feel guilty if they were capable of such emotion and shame, again, if they were capable of it, they feel that other everybody else will, so let's not talk about it. No, that's literally not what's happening. The bill also rejects the idea that any individual is inherently racist, sexist, or oppressive, whether consciously or subconsciously. Oh, really? a position that runs counter to what social scientists have concluded in res recent decades. Yes, people are inherently racist, sexist, oppressive, whether consciously or subconscious, because they're raised in that fucking environment. If you're raised to be a loving person, then chances are you're going to be a loving person. 
If you are raised to be a horrible bigot, then chances are you're going to be a horrible bigot. Now, obviously, that's not everybody. There are people who um, get out of that horrible ideology. And there are people who are raised inherently loving and turn out to be horrible people. So it's not strictly that that nurture can can solve everything. It's not just your environment. But environment plays a big part. So other divisive concepts the legislation states includes the idea that people in one demographic group are inherently responsible for actions committed in the past by other members of that group. Again, that is not what anybody has ever said, and it's not what, and the only people who are doing this is they might feel guilty for sins of the past, and so instead of confronting it, they decide everyone must feel guilty for it. No, no one asked you to feel guilty. If you feel guilty for something that white people did in the past, like slavery, that's on you. I mean, I'm white. I know that I have white privilege and I use my power for good, but, and I know that there are white people who have used their power to oppress people, but I don't feel guilty on behalf of them because I know not all white people are the same. So, what the hell? Like I said, this is some alternate reality that this bill is written for a world that does not exist. It is so bizarre. The bill's longest section is devoted to laying out its limits, and some of the language seems geared toward preventing it from being overturned by legal challenges. Nothing in this act, the legislation states, may be construed to inhibit or violate the First Amendment rights of any student or employee or to undermine the duty of a public institution of higher education to protect, to the greatest degree, academic freedom, intellectual diversity, and free expression. Which it comes counter to what you just claimed they're, you're trying to do. So pick a lane. What the hell? But that is exactly what was construed by Alabama House Representative Ontario Tillman, a Democrat, during debate over the bill. This is a 14th Amendment violation. Clearly vague, clearly unconstitutional, he said, according to WBHM. We're putting a prior restraint on my thoughts of speech, he called. He added, calling out what he said was a First Amendment violation. Of course it's a First Amendment violation. The government is telling you what you can and cannot say. Duh. If there was a, if there was a classic case of a First Amendment violation, a more classic case, I do not know what it is. The bill says it doesn't prevent students, staff, or faculty groups from hosting DEI event or discussions as long as they don't use state money. <sighs> oh, you can have an education, you just can't make us pay for it. Even though it's a state institution and it's your fucking job to, to pay the colleges. Oh, Wow. Other provisions deal with situations that might arise in the classroom. Oh, you mean we're actually getting to reality? The bill says it would not prevent a teacher or contractor from responding to questions that are raised by participants relating to DEI or divisive concepts. Okay, so basically you're just throwing your base some meat? It, that isn't actually workable. You just want your base to say, to look and say, see, they're anti-DEI. They, they hate diversity as much as I do. Seriously, what is the point of this damn bill? 
In other subsections, the bill gives some leeway to colleges needing to fulfill accreditation standards or requirements, both in their subject matter and in the collection of demographic information. Interpreting the legislation could vary according to different circumstances. While the bill targets DEI efforts, it also states that public colleges can authorize teaching any divisive concept as long as it's done in an objective manner and without endorsing endorsement as a part of the larger course of academic instruction. Again, what the hell do these idiots think happens in college? I'm starting to think they've never stepped foot into a college classroom ever in their lives. Oh my god. Um that does not compel assent and otherwise adheres to the bill. Again, nobody in college ever does it. Even if your professor leans towards a point of view, you are allowed to object to it. You are allowed to have a debate because that's what happens in college. Again, whoever wrote this, I swear none of these people who who sponsored, who voted for, and the governor herself, have actually gone to college. Because none of this is re reality. I just do not know where, where they think they went to school that forced them to believe concepts they did not agree with. Now, I'm not going to say there's never been any professor ever who you know, maybe graded based on how much you agree with them. I'm sure there have been horrible professors like that. Those people exist. But to assume that they're all like that? Huh? While it does apply to contractors used by the state or its schools, the bill specifically excludes any person or company that does construction work. Okay, so basically construction companies are you are allowed to use minority labor. That's so nice of them. Oh, we don't want you to learn about black people, but you know, they they can work for us. That's perfectly fine. Oh my god. Do these people even think before they write a bill? Oh wait. Of course they don't. If they thought about it, they wouldn't be doing something like this. Because this is strictly bullshit. Anyway, that is the end of the article. And I, I never want to go back to that. Oh, excuse me. I never want to go back to that alternate reality ever again. That was some scary shit. I felt like I was taking acid. And I was having a horrible trip. As a disclaimer, I've never done acid. However, it's just so wonky this whole bill that it seems to be attacking something that literally is not happening I think I know where this comes from a bunch of students possibly the legislators themselves felt uncomfortable that they were in a minority when it came to a certain certain opinion and because they didn't like the feeling of not everybody agreeing with them, they decided that this is pervasive and everybody doesn't feel comfortable when they have a horrible, horrible opinion that nobody else agrees with them. So they're going to make it so they don't feel bad anymore. That is the only thing I can get out of this bill. I really don't know what else this bill is trying to do because it's attacking concepts that are not happening. Unless, I mean, granted, I'm sure a lot has changed since I've been in school, but it couldn't have changed that much. I mean, I just don't know what else to say about this, so... Instead of trying to think of something more, I will end it here, and see you guys in the next video.